So in this video, we're going to talk about the physical properties of alkanes, and we're going to stick alkenes and alkynes in a separate video because they have actually a different interaction they use to interact with each other. So alkanes, as a reminder, these are carbons, that, hydrocarbons that are saturated with hydrogen. So there's no double bonds, there's no triple bonds. Well, how do they interact with each other? Well, the carbon-hydrogen bond, even though it's technically polarized, which is carbon, is more electronegative than hydrogen, they're not that polarized, and effectively, they look like a nonpolar compound. So if we were to draw methane molecules, and we were to look at the electron density, they would just look like big balls of electron density. That's it. So there's no reason for them to act, interact, and actually methane is really hard to liquefy. We typically have to go to high temperatures and low pressures. So why the high pressures and why the low temperatures? Well, it's kind of um, looking at the electrons. So electrons at high temperatures look like probability waves, but if we go to low temperatures, they start looking like electrons. They start looking like balls. And the other thing electrons can do, statistically speaking, is they can move to one side of the molecule. So if they go to one side, just for a moment, the left side of this molecule is gonna look negative and the right side is going to look positive. Now, this methane molecule is in isolation, meaning that we have low pressure. It does this disper it does this quick shift in electron density, and no one sees it, and it bounces back. But if we're at high pressures, there's a good chance the two of these will be close to each other. And this positive charge here will draw the electron density to one side of the molecule, and we'll end up getting a positive and a negative side of this molecule as well. These are what our deltas are implying to us. Positive, slightly negative charge, slightly positive charge. And what we end up doing is creating a series of dipoles. Now this is why dispersion forces are sometimes called, called induced dipoles, is that we have a dipole that creates another dipole that creates another dipole and we get this cascade effect. Now, as you may imagine, this is a very precarious situation. So particularly in the case of methane, you have to go to really low temperatures to even see this effect and really high pressures to make sure this effect is propagated through. So dispersion forces represent the weakest intermolecular force. Now, that said, as we start making the molecules, molecules heavier and heavier, so we start going to C2, C3, C4, C5, lots of carbons in the chain, we start seeing what looks like improving dispersion forces. Well, this is kind of a misleading idea. What's really happening is that at a given temperature, the molecules have an average kinetic energy, and this is going to go as 1 over the square root of the mass. So as they start getting heavier, they start moving slower and slower. So they can't, it's not that the dispersion forces are really getting stronger, it's just that they're more likely to see each other. They're moving so slow now that when one gets an induced dipole in it, through statistical coincidence, it's more likely to encounter another molecule and they'll begin to interact. But typically though, the only way to really make alkanes liquefy and really see them interact is just to make them really heavy. So something like a C8, a C12, a C14, that's going to be a liquid at room temperature, not because the dispersion forces are necessarily better, it's just the molecules are more likely to find each other because they're moving slowly. So this would basically look like an increase in pressure effect. But these are the predominant intermolecular forces when you look at alkanes.